How long have you been practicing architecture? Um, I started my own office um, more than 20 years ago. I imagine you've seen a lot of changes in the profession, evolution. Um, how has it changed for you? Um, I think in England it's changed uh, in a number of ways. And I think in Europe it's changed in a number of ways. I think in England I would say that there's a slight mood change in terms of acceptance of modern architecture. Mm -hmm. I don't think Spain has suffered that in the same way. I think, <coughs> you know, in fact, one of the countries we looked at in the 1980s as an example of you know, public work, modern, public, mm -hmm. modern architecture in the public sector, you know, was Spain. Um, so I would say there's, there's a sort of mood change in England towards an acceptance of, of, of work. I would also say that I would say that within a general European context, the quality of architecture has improved since the 80s. I think there was a sort of modernist crisis. Mm -hmm. Then we had the disaster of postmodernism. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this was a shake up in a way to sort of slightly remind us all to look at history a bit more, look at the quality of mm -hmm. architecture a bit more, not just accept the, mm -hmm. the language of modernism as per se. And again, I would say sp Spain made a big contribution in that. So if you think about the quality of normal architecture yeah. um, in 2008 compared to, let's say, 1988, um, you know, I think there are European countries that have been producing a lot of good quality architecture. I don't mean the, the star singular pieces. I mean the town hall in a small mm -hmm. Spanish city or mm -hmm. a, a library extension or, you know, I mean, medium level architecture, which I think is the, the thermometer of, mm -hmm. of uh, the measure mm -hmm. of architectural standard. I don't think you measure architecture by just what Norman Foster does and what Frank Gehry does. Right. Um, so I would say that that, that medium level yeah. has improved. I think on the other hand, I think there's been uh, a big change in the sort of commercial pressure. Mm -hmm. um, in some ways, we're absolutely the cusp. I mean, something's going to happen now. Something is happening. Something that we've been saying is going to happen for a long time finally has happened. Um, there has been too much money around in a way. Mm -hmm. There's been too much attention to singular buildings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's been too much use of architecture as uh, an advertisement, mm -hmm. whether it's an advertisement of a city or it's an advertisement of a museum or it's an advertisement of a company. It's encouraged a sort of autonomous, spectacular architecture. What do you tell students? Because if there is this change and if there are these intrinsic values that should not be lost, um, how, can, how can a student's uh, education contribute to keeping that or raising the level of quality of architecture? What types of tools do they need? What types of um, experiences? Um, stop looking at images and think about ideas. Mm. I, mean, I, th I think we've been dominated by a sort of virtual experience of architecture. Architecture is the most physical of the arts mm -hmm. um, and it contains, you know, with I can feel this stone. I mean, it's, you know, it's impressive. Mm -hmm. um, but it's stuff, and 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 we are we've we got lost in these years with the virtuality, you know, the virtual world, and students are running through magazines, looking at images, and copying those images. And I think now is the time to really take stock, mm -hmm. talk about ideas again, talk about the city, talk about issues which are not just, um, you know, what shape should a building be? Images are often produced by computers, but you'd have to admit that computers do a great service to architecture uh, in certain roles. Yeah, <coughs> everything is a tool and uh, all tools are useful, but all tools have their limits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you, you, you don't eat an egg with a hammer. Um, you, so 
and I think we're, we're a little bit at the moment victim of these tools. Mm -hmm. um, we can use computer structures to start to, to make um, methodological techniques which are incredibly interesting and fascinating and convincing. And then you think, well, yeah, but is it relevant? I mean, is, you know, mm -hmm. there are lots of things. Building a cathedral out of matchsticks is, is you know, impressive, but is it necessary? Um, I think there's a lot of, you know, times when architects, you know, what we're really talking about all the time are really simple and difficult, but very difficult things. Mm -hmm. How do you talk about beauty? How do you talk about aesthetics? How do you talk mm -hmm. about what a building should look like? So it's mm -hmm. much easier to talk about how you get there or mm -hmm. why you got there. Mm -hmm. So we've been through sort of functionist descriptions. We've been through the whole modernist, um, you know, manifestos. Now we're going through sort of methodological descriptions that when we did this and we put that and we changed that and we folded that and then, you know, and it gave us this. Yeah, fine. I mean, it, it's just, you're not, you're still avoiding the judgment. It's a sort of determinism. Architects are really frightened to say what they believe in. They like to say, well, I did this because of that. I did this, we started this, and so that led to this, and that led to that, and that, you know, fine. It's a, it's a very interesting process, but, and what do you believe in? What's, what do you think architecture does? What do you think are its limits? What do you think it's invested with? How do you best use it? Uh, so I think, you know, we have to be careful that we don't hide behind those tools. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing is that the market has demanded we use those tools against ourselves. Mm, We've invented a gun and we are holding it against our head all the time. At the very point where you're just sketching an idea for how a building might be, a process which is going to take you another three or four years, the client wants to know precisely what it's going to look like from every point of view. Mm -hmm. They're not even interested in the plans. I mean, we have competition requests where Yes, you don't have to design the building, but we just need an image from the river and one from the... <laughs> <coughs> okay, so you want the image, but you don't want the design yet. Yeah. No, no, we don't need you. You don't yeah. have to do yeah. all the design. Yeah. How do you get an image without... I mean, how right. do you... <coughs> and this is, this is a, a pressure that we've all... You know, because in the old days, you'd do a sketch and you put a few trees in front of it and, and say, it's going to be something like this. And then we say, oh, okay, yeah. yeah, we don't expect more than that. Now they expect... A photographic rendering of, of mm -hmm. something close to reality. So we're freezing design and that means that we've all got to come up with facade ideas and ideas because we're addressing the, the problem is how do you answer that question? Mm -hmm. So the virtual world is even influencing our conceptual processes mm -hmm. because the biggest anxiety is how do you design that image? Yeah. Not how you design the building. So it sounds like you're saying it all comes back to idea. The idea yeah. has to be there, the idea first, and the other things come afterwards. Absolutely. I, I, think, right. I think we shouldn't be seduced by technique. And, yeah. I, and I think yeah. we all know good architects. You know, all the good architects I know, I wouldn't say at the end. I would say in the end, the reason they're interesting is because they've got ideas. Yeah. Exactly. Those ideas are not normally necessarily only architectural. Yeah. You know, I think. I think someone should study anthropology and then do architecture. I mean, there's a lot of students that say, I'm really interested in drawing and I, I'm, I'm good at maths, I, so I think I should be an architect. Yeah, but you could be interested in anthropology and, and love bicycles. And be a good architect. And be a good architect. I don't, yeah. I don't think that, you know, there's a sort of... I think it's about, you know, a passion, desire and intelligence and... You know, and I think we just we just using architecture as a tool to do things which, in if you're a writer, you'd use words, right. and right. if you're a plumber, you'd <laughs> use you'd wrenches, use wrenches and soldering. <laughs> great, yeah. great.